Uh, my name is Jim Hood. I'm a software consultant uh, at a company called Pillar, mostly in Ohio and Michigan. I live here in Omaha, so I'm really happy to not be traveling uh, so I can be here today. What I've been doing for the last couple of years is um, coaching uh, mostly agile technology teams, and I've become very suspicious of the, the job description of coaching. Uh, so really this talk is about putting myself out of business as a coach. So I have uh, five simple things that you all can do in your own teams to be your own coach. So you don't need to hire someone to come in and tell you what to do differently. You can just do it yourself. Um, so first, how many of you work with other people or play with other people? We all do, right? We all do. And so getting better at that is something that's worth doing. My five points are really focused on uh, sort of a corporate team environment. I suppose you could apply them to sports teams or, um, I don't know, kindergarten class. But uh, that's, you know, corporate is, is sort of where I've been for the last two or three years. So the first thing, um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is standing up. Very simple thing you can do. Uh, and of course, in an Agile world, how many of you are doing Scrum or Lean or Agile, something or other, right? So you're probably familiar with the stand-up meeting in the morning or in the afternoon where we talk for 15 minutes about what we're going to do. This is not what this is. Uh, so there was a guy, Sousa, in 1998 who was studying um, how can we be better at education. He was trying to figure out different things we could do in the educational world. And he came up with uh, some research that says 15% more blood goes to your brain simply by standing up. So how many of you have been in the slog fest two hour meeting where uh, you just want it to end and we've gone round and around and around and we can't make any decisions and there's, there's zero answers and holy crap. So just stand up. By simply standing up, you inject energy, creativity, um, and enthusiasm into the room. So if you think about the human body, we're really just a great big fluid sack. And by about the 40 minute mark in one of those really nice recliner chairs, where do you think all that fluid is? It's in our ass. <laughs> so stand up, get some blood flowing to your brain, and you'll be amazed at what that simple change can do in, uh, in a team atmosphere when you're trying to solve a problem. Um, oh, and also, later on in the talk, I'm getting very good, thank you. Uh, later on in the talk, I'm going to ask for some volunteers, uh, and one of the things you'll need to do is stand up. So if you're willing to stand up, please raise your hand when I ask for the volunteers. Uh, and I guess the other thing I should say, I'm happy to have a conversation about this stuff as we go along, not save it till the end. So if you have thoughts and ideas about whatever I'm talking about, just shout them out or stand up or raise your hand, all of that. The second thing that I like to do in teams um, to try and help them be better is hurry up. So uh, lots of times we've got to come to some conclusion or make some decision or discover some important piece of information and we'll schedule a meeting and we'll spend 60 minutes and we might get there and we might not. But if I say, okay, we've got five minutes to do something, uh, all kinds of interesting things happen in the room. So think about yourselves. If you've got, uh, so we, how many of us have written a term paper in our life? <laughs> right, so term paper, uh, beginning of semester gets assigned, end of semester it's due. When did you start <laughs> working on the term paper? Yeah, at the end. So um, why, instead of waiting until the end, why not move the end closer to when you want the thing? So instead of a 60 minute meeting to come to an answer, make it a 15 minute meeting, get in there and feel the pressure of having to deliver something on some time box that you think might not even be possible. If everyone's feeling that same pressure, all of the distractions and all of the sidebars and all of the, um, the sort of uneventful and unuseful branches go away and we're all sort of super focused on what it is we've come to do rather than having the 60 minutes to, uh, to just you know, spend together. Uh, the other thought that I had was, oh, I've got two other thoughts. Uh, if you're trying to get someone to show up and help you with something, having a known investment in time that is shorter is like, more likely to uh, convince them to come help you. 
So if you get a meeting request for 60 minutes um, versus a 15 minute meeting, how likely are you to want to join in the 60 minute over the 15 minute meeting? Um, so this is a, a great way to get other people to come and help you, um, if, either in your team or like people outside of your team, because everyone's time is valuable, right? The other thing that you may or may not have uh, come into contact with is a, uh, a technique called Pomodoros. Have you heard of Pomodoros? Very nice. Okay, so Pomodoros, for those of you that don't know, um, is the practice of setting a, it comes from the tomato timers. You remember the tomato timers, the 60 minute timers? So you set one of those timers for 25 minutes uh, and you have a decided uh, uh, activity that you want to accomplish in that 25 minute period. When the timer goes up, you stand up, you walk away, you check your email, you, you flush whatever you were doing out of your mind for five minutes and then you set the timer again for 25 minutes and that's how you work for the entire day. And it, um, it provides an extreme amount of focus, but it doesn't overwork you. Uh, there's different, there's different uh, ideas of what the time limit is. There's a guy who says 48 minutes and 12 minutes is ideal. You could do that indefinitely. Um, 25 minutes, I think, is the original Pomodoro. There's actually an Android app called Pomodroido that will allow you to sort of step up your game and it will award you badges for doing a 25 minute or a 30 minute or a 45 minute. Um, so try injecting some time boxing into your world and see if it can make you better. So Jim, yep. here's one that I have tried out recently. There's a group that I'm a part of and we wanted to have a monthly officers meeting, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So as I'm now the person that schedules that and it was of course the standard, okay, we're going to meet once a month for an hour. And what I thought might be a good idea on the uh, theory of trying to do things more frequently is I said, all right, well, let's meet every three weeks, but only for 45 minutes. So do time box, that right. meeting a little bit, but have more frequent meetings yeah. so we can stay on top of things. Okay. Just thought I'd share that with you. So that is um, increasing the frequency and reducing the time. That's right. It turns out to be almost the same amount of time over here. But less. More. Less than? It's more? And is it more effective? We've only got it twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll let you know in a year. All right. Adam? So, programming, as a programmer, I can get into the zone. Yeah. I don't want to be interrupted. Yeah. Is this still a good idea? Yes. So, um, yeah, so the question by Adam was, as a programmer, I want to get in the flow. I want to get in the zone. Um, is the Pomodoro, I'm guessing, still a good technique? Right. Um, and I, the answer is yes. Uh, during the Pomodoro, we close out all distractions. So you're not answering the phone, you're not checking Twitter, you're not doing Facebook, you're not whatever. Um, so you, you have uh, an ability to get in the zone. Uh, and then for the five minutes, you let all that stuff come in, but only for five minutes, and then you shut it back down. You'll probably start like having trouble getting back into the zone. Um, and so for that, you might do a longer Pomodoro like a 40 minute Pomodoro. Um, but the discipline and, and sort of the habit uh, gets, be, you become accustomed to it and you be, you're, you're able to snap back into the zone after like a, a short break uh, pretty easily. And there's tools like Mind and Task Hub with your programming that help you multitask. So if you take that break, you can come right back to exactly where you left off, have all your files open, have all the steps you touched. So there's tools to help you get back to that. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, you get you got your phone phone apps. Um, there's a website e dot timer dot com egg timer um, that's browser based, and you can set it for however many minutes, shut it, you know, minimize it, and then it'll launch and beep and all of that when it's done. So yeah, you you want to. You want to like have the boundary. You don't want to just become fuzzy. Oh, I think I haven't checked Twitter in a while. Oh, maybe I should go do that. That's where it sort of all falls off the rail. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's akin to like uh, having a note card and like 
Okay, here's the next the next activity that I want to accomplish, and now I'm going to go grab coffee or use the restroom, and then when I get back, oh, that's where I am. That's that's great. Um, okay, now I'm ready for the volunteers. So I need I need five plus or minus two people. Stand up if you're willing to volunteer quickly. Uh, good enough, fabulous. So um, I have five pieces of paper. And what I want you to do is come over here, volunteers, and you need to order them um, most important to least important. Yep, and you all need to agree. Oh, yeah, you have to agree. And so, for those of you that are that are watching, they're just arbitrary words: alligator, uh, android, Obama, red, and Bill Gates. How long do we have? We need to do it. I mean, I'm done at 11. Just, just the, okay. Well, he said most important. Okay. Most important. Alligator. Most important. I feel like an alligator right here. I can agree with that. I don't know. All right, let's do. All right, folks. It's a 30-minute talk, so so let's uh, let's stop for a second. I'm not done. Stay here. Stay here. So now I have another uh, five items. You're going to do the same exercise. However, this time, no talking. If you want to make a change, order of importance, you go and make the change. No talking. Go. Oh, sorry, for those of you that can't uh, see, children, fire truck, beef jerky, rock and roll, and salamander. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can go sit down. Okay, so what just happened? First of all, did we win? No, they're arbitrary words. There is no order of importance. But did you notice what happened the first time? Oh, let's go alphabetical. Alphabetical, alphabetical. Wait, I don't agree with alphabetical. Wait, what about, what if the world didn't have any red? Oh, what net worth, right? There was all this talk. Uh, the second time, there was just action. And if you didn't believe in yourself or your desire enough to go and move the card, you didn't. And so I would assert, I've done this when there's lots more time, and it's, it's usually the same, uh, that if you shut up and do things silently, things come to a resolution faster. It might not be the best answer, but more often than not, it's an answer that can move us forward, which is what we're trying to get to. So uh, a, a, this comes in... A, a lot for me in like a retrospective or a planning session where it's sort of fuzzy. What was the worst thing that happened or what's the most important thing for us to do next? And we all have our opinions. Put them on a board, put them on a table, five minutes in silence, go. And people resolve, one sec, people resolve themselves usually earlier than the time box um, by staying quiet. What if somebody had more information about something than the other person? So, I mean, yeah, at, these are arbitrary, but like, yep. when you, so, like, when I do this, when I do this for real, we go through all the cards and ask for ask any clarifying questions. Does everyone understand what this represents? Does everyone understand what this means? So there's usually a, a normalization beforehand, so that we all have as much the same information um, as as we can. So um, that's a great point. Because like yeah, when those two were flipping those around, he might have had more information than that. It yep. Be in this mm -hmm. than that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So you do in a team setting, you want to normalize the cards. 
Okay, here are the cards that we got to work with. This means this, this means that. Are we all clear? Any questions? Do we understand what this means? And then, okay, bam, on the table, five minutes in silence, go. And, like, it also, the, the, the non vocal uh, sort of arguments take place. No me, no me, no me. Um, and you can do that forever, but at some point, you're going to have to non verbally, uh, 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 like, resolve that argument. Either someone's going to have to give in and then we can talk about it later, or uh, other times, like if I'm, I'm trying to set cards across a spectrum, like was it horrible or was it the most awesome thing ever, and, and something's on the horrible side and someone else grabs it to the most awesome thing ever, and then like over time it sort of wiggles out into the middle. Uh, the silence really helps that process move forward uh, faster and more efficiently. What do you do with that if you have some people who are really like adamant and forceful about how they want things to be ordered and other people just won't participate? Um, so I find that the silence helps to amplify people that may not want to participate and uh, dampen the more vocal folks because our movement is uh, the same, right? Like you might be able to speak better than me <laughs> Right? You've got all the grammar in the world and I just you know, got out of kindergarten and so I'm afraid to like, speak when, because you're so perfect and wonderful, but you don't move a card around any better than I do. Um, so I'm not going to be judged on my technique, it's just really the result of my action. Um, and that's, you know, that's absurd. But, but that's sort of what goes on in people's minds. Like I don't, I'm afraid of what I might say being wrong, but the action is sort of benign. When it's happening silently, I would look at it and see the change in the movement, and I would have to internalize and find a reason for why they just did that. Right. Instead of them trying to convince me, I have to convince myself, why would they have done that? Yeah. And so we all settle in on something we can live with, rather than fighting for the thing that we want, which is a slightly different uh, attitude. You find the silence process to be enough to kind of cancel out the options? It's one of... It's one of the techniques that I use to, um, to help uh, bring equality to the team. There are others. Um, another place that this shows up is in planning poker. For those of you that don't live in an agile world, you got a bunch of cards and we got to figure out how big they are, how small they are. So instead of maybe assigning points that are arbitrary because what's a five and I don't know what a five is, we'll just lay them out on a table and do a relative spectrum. Like this end is small and that end is enormous. Um, you know, and silently go size the cards. And then afterwards, we've got columns of cards, and we can say, okay, this column is a two, and that column is a five, and that column is an eight. Uh, so, people's brains rationalize better those relative things than if you said, everybody in the room leave in five minutes. You might have something to leave in two minutes. Some people, minds don't judge the time very good. So, relative is better. Yep. So, any other thoughts on shutting up? <laughs> this one might become controversial, but I believe in it uh, a great deal. So in a programming world, I'm a big fan of pair programming. It's the one thing I wish Matt Steele would have touched on a little bit in his talk on TDD. Uh, but in, in this uh, context, I'm actually advocating pairing up on just about anything. I've done, um, you know, been writing Word document proposals for, for clients uh, by myself and have found that getting a, a buddy to come beside me and work through their questions or what we're going to deliver or, or that kind of thing, just an enormous help. It, it's sort of the same way that the driver um, in, in pair programming is worried about the syntax and the navigator is worried about you know, the, the lay of the land. We can do the same thing in terms of grammatical errors or the, the, the layout or uh, of Word documents. I've also done a lot of pairing um, when I'm trying to sort of break down a problem. The client that I'm at now, we're, we're trying to get their portfolio in check. So all the projects that they have running. And so instead of just sitting down and, and looking at the list of projects and trying to figure out what it is, um, I've been pairing and helping you know, the, the PMO pair with the business on what is this project about, what's most valuable, um, what do we have to gain out of it, um, things like that. So, for those of you that aren't developers, but live in a, in a world where you're you know, working with others, um, try, oh crap, try, uh, try getting someone else to come and help you, or going and helping someone else. 
the the other the other things that I have on the card here is uh, you're getting instant feedback from someone that may not agree with you, so you get a contrary opinion. Uh, and you can also get separate energy rhythms, which sort of helps sustain for longer periods of time. Like when I get bored or tired or grouchy, uh, I swap the keyboard with my pair, or I swap the whiteboard, or I swap whatever I've got, and then they pick up because they've, they've got an itch to go in a direction, and then I become sort of the navigator. Uh, it's really great. Uh, yeah. Okay, so my last one um, is probably the hardest one for me personally. Uh, all the other ones are things that you can sort of inflict out on your teammates. Hey, why don't we try this? Hey, why don't we do this? This one is internal. Um, so this is really just about a positive attitude. Uh, it's really easy to see all of the problems uh, that exist in, in our, our environments. Um, it's a, it's a, a bit harder to, to rise above them, to be the, the uh, ray of optimism, to try and, and find your way out. Uh, and expecting others to do that uh, is much easier than expecting it of yourself. So um, when, I, when I coach teams, um, I sort of do an individual conversation with many of them about being the ray of sunshine and, and thinking up, even when, you know, the tests are brittle uh, or we're never going to be able to ship or, you know, the third party API sucks or, you know, whatever it is. Because those all might be true, but uh, the way forward is not to dwell in that, but to, to lift yourselves out of it. And many times it just takes one um, in a team to be able to, uh, to get started. It's sort of an upward spiral. Uh, the other thing I have here is um, be honest and direct. So, Honesty and directness may, thank you, uh, may not necessarily be the same as thinking up. Um, so painting a pretty picture when it's not pretty isn't constructive. So when you're, when you're thinking up, um, it may be, look, we're in a really bad spot right now. Our customers hate us and we've got a bajillion bugs and um, we just lost three of our developers. So that's the honest and direct part. The think up would be, okay, what can we do right now? that can get us to a better spot, and which of those three is the most important to work on, and let's go after it. Um, and lastly, when you're thinking up, uh, try to remember the, the sphere of control versus the sphere of influence and the sphere of interest. Your sphere of control is usually much smaller than your sphere of interest, which is smaller than, or uh, control, influence, sorry, um, and, and interest. So when you decide what to do or how to think up, focus in on your control, because it's what you do that can then sort of um, impact other people uh, around you. So it's not those people need to do their thing better. It's, OK, here's what I can control. I can control the code. I can control the, the, the way in which we work, that kind of stuff. Um, and so we're going to change it that way. So those are my five. Thanks for hanging out. Um, happy to take questions for 30 seconds or so. <laughs> Thank you.